from here. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Today we're working on a 2008 Volkswagen uh, 2.0 Turbo FSI. This is a GDI system. I forget what the F stands for in the um, Volks, Volkswagen or in the German world. I remember the FSI Audi. Some of you guys remember the FSI Audi I worked on with the bad engine mount. Um, anyway, this should be pretty straightforward. Um, to be honest, I was here last week for something else, dropping off parts for my son's car that we're fixing here. And um, I just scanned this real quick and it has uh, lean exhaust faults and it has misfire codes on like all the cylinders. And um, I did a, I was using the RO, uh, now I'm using the Snap-on, but I did see that my fuel trim numbers were elevated and it wasn't misfiring. And um, so I'm, I'm suspecting that we have some type of vacuum leak and, and that um, that is also maybe causing the misfire codes. I'm not sure, we're gonna test drive it. I have not done that yet. Um, but uh, there's a few things about this system that uh, we, you guys definitely wanna be aware of. Number one is this cover, you can see it now, yeah. It's loose. Um, what I didn't know, uh, last week when I was looking at this and I got on the phone with my friend Tommy Wolf of Positive Lead Diagnostics He's the Volkswagen master tech friend of mine He's like yeah put a pry bar underneath and pull that up in other words There's no bolts that hold this cover on I'm like what are you talking about a pry bar and he was right I mean I couldn't believe how hard this was to get off so right now before we test drive this just so you know This cover is still loose uh, but the mass airflow is plugged in and uh, we should be good to drive it. Uh, the other thing is, um, we're gonna be getting on the phone with Tommy because he's gonna walk me through the measured block values uh, for our fuel trim numbers and we're gonna follow this as we would any other system. Do our fuel trim numbers improve as we raise the RPM and that type of thing and then we test drive it to make sure we don't feel any type of misfire. There's a few things in here that I set because I had the mass airflow unplugged and these are the factory code numbers because I'm in expert mode, but I set that one. The misfire codes were all there. Leak in the air intake system. I don't remember seeing that fault before. I may have set that one. Um, I think I remember seeing the idle control RPM higher than expected. So again, we're thinking vacuum leak in these scenarios. And then the misfires for all the cylinders, one, two, three, and four, I believe those are all related. Uh, and then we have a uh, uh, related to a lean condition. System to lean at idle, um, that's kind of cool. It says at idle. So I think to me, this is a classic vacuum leak and Tommy had told me, pop the cover, take a look. There's certain vacuum hoses that crack and break and I didn't see anything. So uh, again, this should be pretty straightforward. Long introduction, I apologize. But I'm treading in a little bit of unfamiliar territory. One of them was just simply doing a visual inspection and pulling this cover off, and I messed up. I mean, look, look at, I broke the cover. I'll get a better shot of that crack here later, but I cracked the cover trying to take the stupid thing off. Uh, ridiculous design, if you ask me. Uh, I'll show you why here when we get into the shop. But uh, fuel trim, scan tool, test drive, make sure we don't feel a miss. We'll go from there. All right, you guys have to bear with me here too because fighting a head cold and I sound all nasally and it's not great for camera work but it is what it is all right let's get Tommy on the phone and I believe he told me I was measuring measured blocks 32 and 33 and I am in expert mode what up? <laughs> you're on film Tommy Wolf of what's up positive what's up, sisters? <laughs> So I think you told me um, that uh, it was measured block values 32 and 33? Correct. Okay, hold on. So it's read measure block, and then I can enter my own number. I'm using the Varus, so. Yeah, expert uh, mode. Expert mode, right. So 32 is, do I leave the zero? Oh no, take the zero out. Yeah, I don't think it matters. Okay. 
All right, so um, 32 shows me channel one percentage is Lambda. So that would, would that be my uh, long term? Um, so 32 channel one percentage says Lambda is 6.4 and channel two says percentage Lambda is 1.5. So you said the, the second one is a higher RPM memory? Correct. So they're, they're both long term numbers. Okay. The first one is at idle and your second one is driving down the road to oh, partial load. Okay, and so the value of this scan data parameter is one where I don't need to necessarily change my RPM and look at my long-term numbers to see if they improve or get worse, where the memory here shows me that. Correct. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so it's worse at idle. Now, it's not it's not, it's not, not super bad at 6.4%, but it's definitely worse at idle for that one. And then 33 is my short term. And then see, they give me, okay, channel one percentage lambda and there's a percentage. And then it says channel two is voltage. What is the voltage on that? That's, that's supposed to be O2 voltage. Okay, so it's like a wideband uh, number maybe? Yeah, sometimes I've seen them where those numbers don't even change. Okay, well I'm not worried about the voltage. We're gonna focus on the short term lambda which is channel one, and then uh, I'll show you guys as we're talking to Tommy, and I did this off camera. If I raise the RPM, look how much better that is. So that drops down to around 0% at, I don't have an RPM here for you guys. That's 3,000 RPM right there. In fact, it just it's going into the negative numbers at that RPM, but certainly an improvement, and now it's, yeah, pretty rough. Pretty rough at idle while wow, it's it just went zero on me, which is strange. And now the RPM's real rough. Now the RPM's better. I know you guys didn't see that on camera, but when it went 24% after it was at zero, idled smooth right out. So th this is absolutely classic vacuum leak stuff here, Tommy. Sweet. But the problem, you know, uh, the, you know, as we're talking together and I'm talking to my audience. Um, we also have a bunch of misfire codes actually on every cylinder, but I really think that they're, they're related and the test drive is going to answer that question. I think for us, probably. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to our community here? No, I, I just think like, uh, once you learn those measure values, like looking at those long term numbers, dude, like all you have to do is look at that. You don't even need to change your RPM and it's, Right. Just looking at those numbers, it's like, wow, this looks like a vacuum leak. Like yeah. You know that one, the first number is idle, and the second number yep. is partial load. Yep. No, that's awesome. And and the key is learning your measured block values. Am I saying that right? Measured block values. Yeah, they're measured measured value blocks. Measured value blocks. Yeah, your MVBs. MVBs. All right, got it. So thank you for giving me the tips on 32 and 33. So it, for everyone else too, and, and for me, is that standard across the Euro market, the 32 and 33 being our long-term and short-term? Um, On VW and Audi, definitely. Okay. Okay, um, cool. As, as far as any other ones, you know. Perfect. Like what's... What's Volvo? That's Swedish. Does that matter? I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if there's measure value blocks on a Volvo. <laughs> okay, cool. Now, uh, as we're talking, the RPM is is surging. It's going from around 800 to around 1300. And when it does that, it matches the trim data. So as the trim data goes to 24, 25%, RPM climbs and then it drops to zero and RPM's dropping. So it looks to me like the computer's going into an open and closed loop type mode. Yeah. Uh, which is making the RPM uh, rise and fall. Let me let these guys see a shot of the tack while we're talking. So watch the watch the tachometer. We're, we're rough and stumbling right now. We're at zero on the scan tool. Yeah, as soon as you, as soon as they see the trim go back to 24%, is when the RPM climbs. We'll watch it one more time. So that's gonna be my idle code that we have. We have like an idle speed over air, you know, reported code too. Like RPM higher than RPM expected. RPM higher than expected, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Um, I appreciate your expertise, Tommy. And uh, me and my community are looking forward to your next video for me. So thank you. Sweet. All right, I'll, no talk, problem, I'll talk to you later or call you if I need you. All right, brother. All right, thanks, man. Later. Bye.
Yeah, so watch that RPM and watch the Lambda on channel one. They correspond. It gets real rough here in, in a minute too. So definitely a loop status change. Um, my main concern now for us is the misfire codes. I believe this is classic vacuum leak symptoms. We treat this like we would any other car. It does not matter that it's a European car. And I've often ripped on these things just primarily because I struggle with these more than I do any other system because the information is just not readily available like the other markets. But we, we don't treat this any different is my point. But this test drive is gonna help me gauge these misfire codes. I, what was that? No, we absolutely have a misfire too. See, this is where this is where test drive was critical. I felt a bad miss right there. Right there. Bad. Bad miss. Alright. We we have absolutely more than just a lean condition vacuum leak. It looks like we have a vacuum leak, but we also have some severe misfiring here. And that feels ignition related. Feels like more than one cylinder to me. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, check engine lights flashing at me, telling me, hey, stop driving. right there. I'm gonna have to get a scope on these coils. See if we can pick up this misfire. This is really bad. I'm sure if I knew my measured block value for for misfiring we could pull that up but I'm not sure that it's really necessary at the moment. Put my window down, see if you guys can hear this. Get my mic out the window. Transmission slipping too. That didn't feel right, that transmission. It may have some kind of strategy. I'm not sure the type of transmission that's in this. I don't think it's a CVT or anything like that. But man, that felt weird. All right, Pete, let me in. Yeah, so word of caution for any of you guys that work on these is uh, there's four grommets that hold this housing on. And uh, my friend Tom said to take a pry bar underneath where the battery is, obviously being careful of that positive post, and you pry up on it here. And I was pulling from all the corners. Look what I did. Freaking broke the corner of this. Now it doesn't go into the airstream, fortunately, so I don't have to worry about the housing. I was worried about where that crack was and where the mass airflow is. Um, but man, just a really bad design if you ask me. You gotta pull in something that, that hard you have to use a pry bar. I mean, it's ridiculous. my 
unfortunately, like I said, doesn't go into the airstream on the inside. It's close. All right, so the rest of us running this car, guys, is gonna be with this cover off and we're gonna be setting mass airflow codes. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was smoke test this, but honestly, after test driving it, feeling that misfire, I'm more concerned about that, but I still believe we have a vacuum leak. Yep. Not gonna get into an oval hole. This is oval shaped with any other tool that I have. Oh, this thing's freaking awesome. There it is. Is that a breather? Time to call Tommy. Call who? My Volkswagen Master Tech friend. Yo. Hey, buddy. What up? Hey, um, part of the PCV system that goes to the valve cover. Yeah. There's this little round like piece that that. Um, it's on top. Yeah, it's leaking out of that. Yeah. Is that, that's not, Junk. that's not like an air vent or anything like that, is it? Yeah, you should never have vacuum there. I should never it's have, like, I should never have smoke coming out of that. No, I okay. don't think so. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that little hole on the side, can you, when it's running, can you feel like a vacuum leak through that? Um, I didn't try that yet. I mean, I can do that, like, but I have my smoke machine set up on it right now. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, Watch you your head, might, Timmy. You might get smoke out of there. I'm not sure. So it that might be normal to have smoke out of that? Maybe. Really? I mean, it shows like evidence of oil leaking too from that same area. Yeah, it's just a crappy PCB valve. So um, that that'd be this whole assembly. What's it called? Yeah, it's it's just a. It's a PCV breather. PCV breather. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely oil tracking, like where, where the smoke's coming out. I don't. Yeah, we. Um. And that should not we, be that that way. Or you think it might be normal to see smoke coming out of there? You don't use smoke machines on this, is what you're telling me. Right. Because you don't have one. <laughs> no, we. I mean, we do, but it's out of nitrogen. So. You don't need nitrogen for an intake. Wait, I got another leak here too. Hold on, I got another leak. I need to get my light. So you think I should run it and see if there's yeah. vacuum there, like spray water yeah. on it or something? Yeah, oh, I mean, you can usually just put your finger of it, you know, and you'll hear it if, it if it is leaking. But the best thing to do would be is to disconnect that one hose off the intake and run it. Just plug that, the intake, size it up, yeah, and look yeah. at your fuel trims. So plug the, oh, just take the hose off the top of that and plug it and then see what the trims do. Yeah. Oh, that's leaking bad, dude. Yeah. I mean, it could be, it could be a bad piece to be. I, I, I don't remember. It's, I don't know if smoke's supposed to come out of there or not. Yeah, gotcha. That's the dipstick that's leaking right there, Pete. Okay, well, I definitely have a misfire, really bad misfire on this too. So it's more than just the, Last we talked on the phone, it's more than just a vacuum leak. Because I, I just drove and it's got a severe miss, so. Okay. And it feels ignition related. And, and these. Yeah, those coils go bad all the time. Yeah, and I'm thinking a primary ramp because these have the transistors inside of them. It's not like I'm going to be able to look at secondary, I don't think. I mean, I can try. But I'm going to do, I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to. What's that? You could with your wise probe or whatever. You, you think it would read it? I don't think it will. Yeah, if you, if you put it dead center on the coil. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. We'll go that route. But I'm, uh, I'm gonna do what you said. I'm gonna take the, the tube off of this 
assembly. The one that goes to the intake, you said, and plug it. Yeah. And see if these trim numbers improve. Got it. I like it. Okay. Thanks, Tommy. All right, man. All right, talk to you. Later. Bye. All righty. That's another win for this easy smoke. Flatter. Freaking badass tool. All right, so one of the things about this is we're gonna be running this car with the mass airflow off, and that's gonna be a factor as well. And how am I gonna plug this? Just hold my thumb over that, I guess. All right. Problem right now is with the math unplugged. Yeah, bam, right off the bat. Minus 24%, minus 26%. That's freaking awesome. Confirmed. Should not be any leak there. Awesome. Awesome. But we ain't done just trying to give you guys another method in case you did not have a smoke machine like me well I mean you saw one of the methods is to take that line off and plug it and look at your trim numbers you see we're at 26 percent I'll show you one more time so I've isolated that whole system look at your trim minus 20 absolutely we have a leak that smoke that was coming out of there is not normal. I was just seeing if we can pick it up with water. You can actually watch this water get sucked in. This is where a little bit of soap actually helps to have some soapy water. We have regular hand soap, Ed. You can watch it. getting rough too. Nice. Beautiful. In here? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Cool. That's our vacuum leak, but that is not our misfire on this car. Let's uh let's get some secondary waveform analysis here. Wise probe, and I got a new adapter. This is when I bought the the Wise probe years ago. It's done well for me, but the adapter failed on this end. You guys saw it in one of my recent videos, and I got a new adapter from my friends at AES Wave. Very inexpensive design, but what's important when you use these, which sometimes I've forgotten about in the past, I've used uh, different adapters. You need to make sure you have a grounding point because if you'd have spark go into the end of this, you don't want it going into your scope. You want it grounded to the block. So this is really important. Nope. Nice if I could. That's not usable at all. This sucked over the years. Cannot get a good signal. I'm gonna have to go primary. All 
Oh, this thing's blinking at me. My battery might be dead. That sucks. Nice, Tommy. Save me some time. We got us a waveform. Now we gotta figure out which one's which on here. It's not a problem. Not a problem. No, it is. You, you, oh. you need, it's got multiple issues. You need this PCV assembly. Whatever they call this thing, I, I'll try to get you a technical name for it later. But you see the, that waveform right there we're looking at? All four coils are firing on that. And then you see the one that's kind of looking weird. Yeah, you got some ignition coil issues too. I'm probably going to end up telling you to put them all in it. Because I got misfires on all four cylinders. And it felt to me on the test drive more than just one cylinder misfiring. And we definitely have some winding issues on these coils. Uh, what we can do with this initially is uh, let's, let's get a little bit more view here. Pause that, zoom out, see if we see some repetition. The one with the straight up line characteristics all, all the way to the left. So count that as one, two, three, four. There it is again, one, two, three. So it's repeating itself. That's the same coil. You can see it in that waveform much clearer. I could sync that maybe figure out which one this is even though I didn't have great waveforms here I should be able to synchronize this pattern and figure out exactly what coil has that characteristic to it all right so second channel we're gonna drop this down to like a one volt. And then we're gonna trigger off this second channel as well. And so it's only gonna draw. It's only gonna draw the waveform on the particular one that I'm connected to. So that's my number four. That ramp looks good. Moving down to number three. Come on. See the number two. Number two looks okay. Number one looks okay. So the one I'm having issues triggering off of is this number three. It's my number three that has the has the goofy rant. Yeah, number three coil for sure. Classic shorted secondary pattern right there. Okay, cool. Absolutely the number three, Pete. Uh, it's going to be up to you if we want to do more than that, given that these coils go bad all the time. I want to pop this coil out and see if I can do a visual inspection on it. Uh, what do you got to help me here, Pete? I need... Looks like this whole harness comes off together. How many other things I can break on this car? Where's the bolts that hold this on? What is it, a clip? Do they untwist? How do they come out? Stupid Volkswagens. Yo, yo, yo. I promise, last time I'm gonna call you. What's up? How do these coils come out? What do you mean? There's no bolts. 
You pull them out of there. You just pull them out. You pull them out of there. There's literally no bolts that hold the coils on this car. Nope. They just push right down. They push down. You don't twist and turn. You just pull them straight up. Yeah, sometimes you need a pry bar. What a stupid <laughs> design. <laughs> I mean, you have to work on these cars, I think, on a regular basis just to be able to work on them. Yeah. Like, they do things that nobody else does. I've never, not once, seen a coil on a car that was not bolted on. Ever? Ever. Never. Yeah. Have now. Yeah, have an I-10. They're, uh, they're good cars. All right, Tommy. You're the man. All right, you sure? You need anything else? I don't think so. I'll, t <laughs> I'll try not to call you anymore. I mean, I don't care. No, it's fine. <laughs> You're just a, you got me. you're just a superstar, man, on film too. Oh man. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right, dude. All right, dude. <laughs> Later. Later. What a stupid design. What a stupid design. <laughs> Why are you handing me the metal part of that, Pete? What kind of shit was that? He handed me the metal part of the coil. It was super hot and I burnt my hand. Oh. Bastard. Tommy, you should know not to touch metal. I should know, I should know not to trust you is what I should know. I was, I was just seeing if, if we had a, a track mark. And this is one where it's really not going to be easy to do a spark output test on. Um, I might be able to if I can turn this upside down. See, I can't, just oh, given the way the harness is, I was thinking I could plug it in and then do a spark output. But that's, not gonna, that's not gonna happen. So I'm just gonna swap two coils. Pete, pull one more out for me and we're gonna move it over and see if that pattern moves with it. And I think I'm gonna have you do all the coils on this, Pete. All four coils, all four plugs. And then you're gonna change this PCV housing as well. Dealer. I wouldn't put anything but factory parts in this car. You're going to do an oil change on this too, Pete. I'm trying to get Paul to get that in. <laughs> Serves you right. All right, moving this. This was the number three. Moving this over to the number two. <laughs> and no, I'm not grabbing that off you this time. <laughs> yeah, fucker. Move the number two coil to the number three. Let's retake that pattern. That dead miss going on now. Might not be plugged in all the way. That's the number four. It's been 200 millivolts. It's ridiculous. That's, I don't think that one's plugged in. Looks like it's not. It's not. I gotta plug this coil in all the way. It won't plug in. I need your big your big pliers you had. Yeah. I've never had any kind of trouble like this. Can't get a reading because that coil's not plugged in all the way. Be why dumbass. Look what I did. I wonder how a dead misfire. That was way too easy to do, people. Pretty stupid. Early. I bent it back.
Good thing I didn't hurt the harness. All right, so what's the lesson here? Be gentle. There we go. All right. Ah, dead miss is gone. Ah, I've got a waveform I can use now. Change that back to a 500 millivolts. That's where we were before. You notice as I'm triggering off of this, that pattern, that pattern is good. That's my number three and my number two. There's my shorted coil. No question about it. And uh, you know, it's not shorted in a, at a point where it's a dead miss, but under load, absolutely. And if we could, if it wasn't for this harness design, we could have pulled this up. I could have showed you weak spark from this coil, but just given the design, the fact that the pattern moved from the number three, right? Good looking yellow ramp, using the green trace to, to uh, synchronize it. And there's your crappy looking yellow ramp. That straight up line at the beginning. It moved to the number two, 100% confirmation, shorted coil, weak spark. And just given how often these fail, according to my friend, Tommy Wolf, I am suggesting we're gonna do all four coils, all four plugs, and then change this PCV assembly. So a couple of takeaways. Uh, one is the cover that I struggled with and I broke the corner of the housing. You see the grommet right here, here. There's one back here that's not gonna be very visible on the camera and then one here. What you need to do, we need to pop these grommets off of the block. We need to put them back on the cover, put it back on. Uh, just remember that there are no bolts and uh, pulling on it is what is needed. You want to definitely be careful with your pry bar though. You get a pry bar in here like Tommy was talking about. You got some solenoids here you could break. You go in too far, you're going to be prying on the coil. So, I mean, maybe just at the beginning of it, right on the top of this valve cover, maybe. But uh, yeah, so that's one. Second takeaway would be that PCV assembly. We now know there should not be any vacuum or smoke coming out of that and you can see the uh, vacuum being, or the soap being pulled into that vacuum leak with it running. So that was pretty cool. Um, the third one would be lean conditions. Um, no different than any other car, even though it's a Volkswagen, it's an unfamiliar system. I needed a little bit of guidance from my friend as far as what scan data parameters to look at, but you really treat it the same way. You saw that my trim numbers improved as I raised my RPM. That screams vacuum leak all day long. It's exactly what we had. And then how important is the test drive? Um, man, looking at the codes initially, I really wanted to put everything together with the vacuum leak because I knew I had one. The car was idling fine and it had elevated trim numbers and I had history codes for misfires. And I have seen that often, often, where a vacuum leak took care of all of those problems. Not the case here, guys. Remember, that vacuum leaks will not affect under load driving conditions. So if you take a car for a test drive and it has some type of under load problem accompanied with elevated fuel trims, you have either two separate problems or you have a, you don't have a vacuum leak. So my point is vacuum leaks do not affect under load driving conditions. We had a misfire under load, you can feel it test drive was critical. Uh, so many times I've been burned in the past where I didn't test drive a car. And uh, uh, as an instructor at a technical college, when you have a class of 20 kids and you're doing live work, you tend to move away from the test drive as being vital because you have to police all these different groups and you're working on six different cars. And you know, sometimes the test drive um, uh, or the emphasis on the test drive from my standpoint is not strong enough and it needs to be. Um, what else? Measured uh, value blocks. Man, learn those for your, for your VW cars. 32 and 33 for Volkswagen and Audi. Remember those two numbers. And uh, yeah, case like this, car's been running 
like this for a period of time, you definitely want to do an oil change too. So it's getting all four coils. Um, as I recommend, all four coils and plugs, it definitely needs one. I'll tell you what, to me, on the test drive, it felt like more than one cylinder. So uh, at minimum of two, I would say to the customer it needs, and then we would suggest the other two. You know, to each his own, how you'd want to sell that job. Uh, PCV system, oil change, coils, plugs, and uh, he should be good to go. Um, I think that's it. Uh, again, this is a 2008 Volkswagen. I believe it's a two liter turbo FSI engine. Um, so uh, all kind of fancy words there, but no different than anything we've already been doing. Fundamentals is key. That is exactly what I focus on and I'm teaching you guys too. So um, any interest in any of the tools that I've used uh, in all of my videos now, guys, I'm putting my Amazon and tools page links in the description um, on YouTube. If this goes on premium, I generally don't do that. So um, I need to tell you guys where to find these links. One, if you're on my website already, it's easy. There's a tools tab, click on it. Um, two would be you can find my Amazon link on YouTube in my channel page icon. So you see my scanner danner, don't be a parts changer, the main channel page of YouTube, there's an Amazon icon in the, in the top right corner that uh, will take you right to my Amazon affiliate page. So, you know, things like this, this light, stuff like that. The bladder for the smoke machine. And so yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I got five more to do today. I'll see you next time.